Winter is coming and it could be one of the coldest winters ever. Right now, extreme cold air from Canada blowing down over the relatively warm water in the Great Lakes. That sets up a weather, weather pattern that's being called a winter storm of historic proportions. Up to six feet of snow possible in some places from Michigan to New York, affecting millions of people, potentially paralyzing the Northeast. And bitter cold temperatures are hitting much of the country. When the weather turns cold, it is good to have your investments prepared. Every year we turn to stocks like Generac and Home Depot for power outages and snow. We bundle up with overpriced puffer jackets from Canada Goose. There's Walmart to stock up on essentials, utility companies, uh, ski resort stocks. Now is the time to think about which stocks you'll want to get into if this winter ends up being even colder than usual. And today on Dumb Money, we are making our list and checking it twice to be prepared for winter weather that's not so nice. We are Dumb Money. Three friends who turn $30,000 into $30 million using nothing more than Twitter and a zero commission trading account. The suits that work on Wall Street, they call those people the smart money. <laughs> That's not us. Our goal is to help level the playing field for everyday investors. We are Dumb Money. Hey there, Dave here along with Chris and Jordan. We are Dumb Money. Welcome to Dumb Money Live. We can't say for sure whether this winter is going to be dramatically colder than usual, but I do know for a fact that this is the earliest in the season that we have ever talked about winter storm trades here on Dumb Money. Before we get into the cold weather stock picks, though, we have to warm up the old YouTube algorithm. Take a second, light up that like button. It is the only thing we'll ever ask you to do. It's quick, it's easy, it's free. Guys, I think this year, more than uh, ever, we need to consider other things for our cold weather stock trades because of inflation and high interest and recession and some supply chain problems. Our usual go-to, Generac, is massively underperforming the market. Generac stock is down around 70% year to date. The SPY is around 17%. So um, we also know that Generac, as of six months ago, was working through a backlog of over $1 billion of home generator demand. They uh, confirmed on their earnings call a couple weeks ago that they still have a backlog. So for me, any unanticipated widespread power outages this winter doesn't really do much for the stock. But I have seen people online, like on Seeking Alpha, who disagree with me. And so I want to know what you guys think. Um, gr great question, Dave. First of all, as it pertains to Generac, let's just set the fact that aside that we don't have actual real data that proves that we're going to have any sort of meaningful differentiated winter season as a whole. Yeah, um, but we yeah. do know that okay. we have we'll a massive storm hitting earlier than usual, and they're saying it's okay. historic. Re yeah, a historic regional storm. Uh, but let, uh, let's talk about Generac. Um, I, I, I don't think it matters whether or not any sort of storm would have a real meaningful impact on Generac sales. Because the key here, I think, now more than ever, because we just can't rely on isolated data anymore, at least during this in, in this macro market environment, yep. to make any good decisions. Because, listen, we've seen before that regardless of what consumer demand looks like, more often than not, it's inflation, cost controls, logistics, supply chain issues. Um, that are hitting the stocks on the earnings side. So I, I think it's more about getting ahead of these trades and being really quick to get in and out of them. I do think still you will see stocks like Generac, like Home Depot, still have that kind of 24 to 48 hour pop just as part of that storm trade. You just need to be a little bit early. Do I think this particular storm is worthy of that kind of a trade though i mean what do you think isn't this hitting an area of the country that it, it dave what's the difference between three feet and six feet of snow i think at that some this, point yeah. does it even matter anymore and, and that's what and that's the thing there the this was a today show top story this morning and we picked this show topic well in advance of that so I, that's you know that's kind of the thing i don't think that this particular storm is going to cause any significant measurable things for for the stocks but i do think that this is like our early wake-up call that it's time to make that list like figure out which stocks we want to look at and then you know because we, we do the show every year we've kind of talked about winter storm trades but i think this year we need to like add on like okay so generac we normally would say yeah they they get a pop when there's a uh, power outage now they can't sell any more generators because they can't make them fast enough and they are already working through this huge backlog 
especially for residential, but also their industrial applications, they have a they have a backlog. And they were talking about it uh, 14 days ago on their earnings call. So yeah, that's why I, I think that maybe, you know, just going back to the usual list isn't quite we're not quite there yet um, because we don't know if there's going to be huge demand for general things by some of these larger companies. But we could look at smaller companies that uh, that could be impacted by things like this. And so I've got a small cap. Well, I, I think we should. Yeah. We, we should do that. I, let's, let's like take but a I'm, look but at I'm our normal at it. stocks. I'm looking at a small cap. Wait, what's okay. That? So I think we should take a look at our normal stocks and kind of filter it through the, you know, what is what is the current macro situation mean for those and then find new ones. And I think your small your small caps yeah, so might the small be the cap, place to so look. They're, you know, they're based they're in the northern United States. They um, they make snow plows. They make salting equipment um, and they install those things on just general vehicles as well. Um, they're a small cap. They're, they're worth like eight or nine hundred million dollars. Um, it's you know they're they're regional they're united states I, I think it's interesting it's something that i could keep an eye on the ticker symbol is plow by the way oh that's an easy yeah one. i i i jordan i've looked into those guys before by the way speaking of snow plows so is, is it any... time to upgrade your snow plow that's the question no is the, uh, let me tell you something is there any better business to be in in, in the northeast my parents have to pay like i don't know fifteen hundred dollars or three thousand dollars or some thousands and thousands of dollars per winter just to have a plow truck come plow their driveway if it snows and if it doesn't snow they still paid that money in advance like what if what a great cash flow business to buy to get a truck get a plow and all these guys like they're all full you can't even get guys to plow to, to on these contracts up in the northeast like it just seems like such a no-brainer business. That's a, that's we're sidetracking now, but uh, Plow Jordan <laughs> is probably listen. I don't think it matters whether companies like Plow actually benefit or not. Let's if anything, the only way they benefit watch. is if these companies decide to upgrade their equipment, right? And so you see, like maybe the snow starts earlier, and you're like, you know what? It's uh, it's year to this is the year to upgrade our uh, I, our plowing equipment. I don't think that's the. Tr I think the trade are retail investors who are looking to for companies that would benefit, don't do a lot of research, and buy them temporarily. And you just got to buy them a day before that and then yeah. sell the day after that and not wait around to see if this snowstorm actually does impact sales of plow or right, generac. But, but for, like, for any, you know, for any, well, you're looking at bigger companies that need like bigger trends. So you're looking at things like, ugg boots or you know vf corp that owns uh that uh, you know what i mean or you're looking at canada goose which is a terrible company or I mean, you know all sorts of different things that but i think know, that kind of those retail traders might jump into and so you're this is this is one of those that. trades though for people that might actually benefit from this snowstorm and so i think that's the difference no and no i'm looking I, you're getting no i'm looking at companies that other idiots are going to think would benefit from XYZ event and they're going to buy a day after I buy them because I'm only buying them because I think someone else is going to buy them when it, it hits the Today Show or whatever, when it actually happens, right? As, yeah. as we start getting into it. But we've seen in the past, remember when we did an episode where we talked about the significance of easy to remember stock tickers for retail investors? Plow is one of those that if you think like, oh, snow people might be buying snow plows, just the fact that you, like, Douglas Dynamics is not a company that I've ever heard of, but Plow well, is a small stock cap, right? that it I can remember. It's a little bit more dangerous even. So, you know, I mean, I don't know if it's a, you know. And, and just looking. looking at, uh, you're looking at annualized. I mean, they, you know, they're they're still down from their height um, a couple years ago. But, uh, but, but just yeah, looking, Jordan, at, looking at the stock chart, going back to, like, they were mirroring the S&P 500 nearly perfectly yeah. until October. And then. The, the spy went up, but then Douglas has taken off. This this uh, chart this this chart tells me that we might have already missed the trade. We should have well, been looking at this well, in October. What trade are you talking, Dave? What trade are you talking about? The, the trade <laughs> hasn't. Ha I mean, the trade that I'm thinking of in my head is some ridiculous storm or combination of storms or or anomaly storm that's going to cause investors to buy s stupid stuff, right? Like like the plow company, like Home Depot, like Generac, and, and the, the stock will pop for 24 to 72 hours. And Plow's you just already up 32%. That, I'm just shocked. That's well, all. There's a I'm shocked, and I think I might have missed the trade. 
maybe that, but that's a different yeah, trade. Might already happen right so it's a different trade it, that, that was based i i don't follow these stocks but I, I can just assure you that there was some reason why that happened right i'm in an earnings call like they, they started going up before their earnings and it looks like they beat expectations by 25 percent on earnings and seven percent on revenue and oh. they took off from there okay and there were small caps so they do move like that are we buying Generac or not? Here's a question, because I don't, I, when is this storm going to hit in Michigan, this epic storm? Cause I, Saturday, I or it. through, it's it's going to happen basically starting now. They already have people standing out with thermometers in the cold weather, uh, and it will basically end on Saturday. Okay, so if I were to trade this storm, I would probably get into these trades today and be out of these trades tomorrow, end of market, out. Out in ho in hopes that there will be additional news flow coming out tomorrow about this epic storm, and then some number of retail traders are going to crowd into what I assume is an e-liquid stock in Plow. All right, and and I but I don't I'm not doing it I'm not doing it. But if I were to do it, that's how I would do it. We're not financial yeah, advisors. Plow, it, pro it does look pretty. Yeah. If you look at the chart, like it just kind of jumps up and down, and it's not very liquid. So I, you know, I don't know how much you could actually invest in this. So, uh, yeah. I, I, I don't think I'm going to pile on to Plow, and I'm definitely not going to invest in Generac. This is not the oh. this is not the time for me to get into Generac. Now, if well, I Generac's was a real other issues going on, and you know, I think just one winter storm isn't going to move the needle on a company like Generac. You need. I mean, oh. they're a big global company, right? So no, and they have wrong. too much going wrong. on, and they have too many, too many no. problems. They they were like our our golden child back a while ago, and they've just been downhill. Wrong, wrong. Generac will absolutely will at the stock. You, you let's separate the two things. Jordan's talking about whether a actual big storm can move the revenue needle or anything for Generac, and you're probably right, Jordan. It probably will not. Um, for the most part, unless it's something really major at this point. But, but is it just part enough of the playbook that people will just jump into it? That's the question. Yes, right. that's it. That's always the trade on weather. It's yeah. always the trade on weather. It's it's trading other investors. It's, yes, for like, I don't want to use the word front running. But it, 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 it's getting ahead of other investors and getting out when they get in. You just have to be 24 hours early. I'm not sure if this storm... Uh, is going to be impactful enough with media attention tomorrow to actually move these stocks. We'll see. I'm, I'm curious. I'm going to watch them tomorrow. The reason why is because it's in Michigan. If it was in like the Northeast, right, or some other in the South or something like that, hell yes. Like you, you would get, you know, a lot more media attention and a lot more investor attention. And you would see that pop in a lot of these storm stocks that we usually see. I don't trust michigan a michigan storm to do that for us i really yeah. don't and ohio okay. is expecting to get uh three feet um eight to 12 inches for much of the northeast but it hits the northeast it, it, they know how to it, deal with it, it it's not it, it, like that, the snowmageddon ice storm of all time that hit texas and broke all of our pool equipment and there were stock trades in uh, replacing pool equipment or sprinklers or that sort of thing so just, just so you know, in the event, we should be mentally prepared, as we always talk about. We're not financial advisors, but this is kind of our strategy of how we would think about these trades. You have to be mentally prepared to act on these trades well in advance. So if that ever were to happen again, that ice storm, a, a ice storm in the south of that deg degree, I have to buy the pool companies. I have to buy pool. I have to buy. There's like three or four of them, right? And I, well, I so, have to buy so to be clear, the pool company thing only makes sense if we get very severe winter storms in the south because you realize that south. once you go above like the red river like people winterize their pools and it's not an issue agreed to so. totally agree i'm just saying it, it, in the event that that were to happen right. i think that's the trade for me um by the way i think this is a, probably the biggest thing i could contribute to today's show is be really careful um about investing in kind of cold weather apparel stocks if we get a super cold wind winter but it doesn't that winter doesn't hit until late like if it's like a, a late january february winter because 
What really matters for a lot of these cold weather stocks is what happens in November and early December. <clears throat> um, if they, if this continues to be a warm-ish winter, because it has been a warmer than average winter so far, correct me if I'm wrong, for the majority of our country. And if that continues through the end of the year, I hate to say it, that's a net, that's a net negative for Goose, for Decker Outdoors, uh, for um, you know, North, uh, the, uh, is it VF VFC? Corp with North Face, yeah, with, yeah. Uh, yeah North Face, know, um, which is owned by VF with their Corp. jackets with any of these guys. Yeah, because listen, they need to sell. They need to sell stuff now, like going into the holidays. They need right. to sell stuff now. Well, and that's the thing, right? So that's where we, we initially got this idea because we found some uh, weather charts of the Arctic that were showing that basically the, the you know weather patterns are colder in the arctic circle this year than they were last year so the problem is that you know if that's if that's accurate and it might be it might not be but if so what's happened in the last few years is that that weather can kind of leak out and those cold fronts can leak out and that causes the problem but if they stay confined to the arctic then you know you don't get these broad-based cool downs across europe and the united states and so it's just it really depends on how that you know how those weather systems behave yeah jordan there are there are so many ways that that could play out that that whole arctic bubble up there i i, yeah. I read a bunch of comments on it, to, it it feels to me like it's almost irrelevant like it means it's almost completely meaningless so i don't trust it and even if we do get a cold winter it doesn't matter if it's a late cold winter that that, that doesn't help a lot of the companies i normally trade on colder than normal winter weather patterns uh, usually what I like to see is cold weather hit in November and then early December. The closer we get to, to Christmas, uh, the more likely these retailers are going to start uh, discounting cold weather merchandise if it's not selling. And once they start discounting, there's no going back. It's a real problem. Uh, that said, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the number one you know, factor uh, that will impact a lot of these cold weather stocks, but it's an important factor. Like Goose generally tries to sell everything they could make and they never discount it. You see Goose starting to discount, that's a huge problem for them. I'm not saying that they have, but that's something to watch out for. We have some uh, amazing um, comments coming in. Antithesis says that uh, he's investing in, not stocks, but socks, so they can turn off the heat. <laughs> um, um, people are trolling you, Chris, for your um, your cat purchases your cat nfts uh cat milk proving to be deflationary <laughs> uh yeah so i sold almost all my cats a long time my my nft cats a long time ago my cool cats so uh that was one i was fortunate to get out of can't say that about all my nfts but pedro says that um, uh, you got unusually cold fast in nashville uh 30s during the day 20s at night I think that, I don't know if it's just me getting older and feeling cold when I go outside more, but I think it's colder here in Dallas, Texas than it has been Dave, in November. No, Dave, because you're not here. We just had one cold snap. It just happened the last two days, two, three days. <laughs> if you would have been here at all before the last two, three days, you would have realized that this is the warmest November I think we've ever had. Uh, I don't know if it's the warmest ever, but it's been exceptionally warm through late October. October and early to mid November, exceptionally warm, except for the last few days. And I believe that's how it's been most of uh, throughout most of the country. So right now, it's not a cold winter. And you can't really go all in on these cold winter trades, especially the ones related to apparel, because that stuff needs to sell right now. Now, could there be a storm trade that happens in the next two to four months? Yeah, there could be a storm trade. I'm watching out for that. I will I will I will always get in on that storm trade. The the key is you just got to get in early. That's all. Um and we will do a show if there is a storm trade that we think is viable and and worth trading for us. By the way, I know that Jordan put out this episode idea and I'm so upset with myself because I totally forgot about the episode I really want to do this week. Can we do it? Can we, the, can we do it next week? It's Thanksgiving next week. Can we? I don't know. Can we find the time to do an yeah, episode? We, next I mean, week? Tuesday. Do like Monday, Monday or Tuesday. 
can we? Because that's the episode I'm actually most excited about right now. Um, so guys, I'm sorry to tease that, but we actually do have an episode that I promise is not about shoes. Uh, <laughs> there's no, no, that was, that was my one the... requirement is we're, we're yeah, done no with two episodes talk. for, for now. Um, it's an episode about something that is an anomaly that's happening this, uh, this right now in the month of November. Uh, it's something that we haven't seen in 13 years. Uh, that's my clue. It's something that we have not seen in 13 years that is happening this November. And it is really rare and it is impacting, I think, numerous companies and Jordan, uh, has a really good trade that he came up with around this change. And we're going to talk about it on Monday. Uh, so sorry for the tease, but I I'm looking forward to that one. I have nothing to contribute to today's episode other than be careful with cold weather fashion stocks. I, I have something to contribute. I was trying to figure out if it's actually been a warmer or cooler fall than average. And according to one source, uh, Noah. The government weather people say that it's warmer and drier in the south uh, going uh, because of El Nino. And then CNN, right under that, same day, October 20th, they report it's a cooler than normal winter. Well, I guess they're saying winter. And yeah. Yeah, no, they're, uh, they're Noah they're is saying warmer fall, cooler winter. It, it, it's been warmer. It's definitely, I, it, listen, it's definitely been warmer. No doubt about it. Um, been warmer. But can we talk about FTX for a second? Can, can we just? Oh, can we? Can we, can we pat to. ourselves? Can we pat ourselves? I want to pat ourselves on the back for a second here, okay? Not to say anything negative about anyone that didn't make this decision, because I don't think this is a very hard thing for people to wrap their head around that a company could have done what this company did. And I don't blame anybody that was doing ads and stuff like that. But. I had an op. I I I was reached. I had an opportunity, and you did, and we had an opportunity at Dumb Money to do to make quite a bit of money off of FTX. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, quite a bit of money. I just want everybody in our world to know that we said no, and we didn't say no because we didn't. We did research on FTX, and we knew that they were fraudulent no. or whatever. Right? Like, we said that's no not because we say no to all advertising. We. Yes. Like if we were, I thought that this Sam, uh, what, what are they calling them? Rip off fraud now. Um, <laughs> I think that I think that's what they call them, but that it's fine. It's, it's going around Sam yeah. bankrupt fraud. I think is what they're calling them. Oh, is that the, is that the, yeah, that's, that's the new fine. meme or at least I, don't know. I saw that. I don't, I don't know, but he seemed like he was the one testifying to Congress. He, he, he did such a good job of like, when they, when they make this an American Greed episode, it has such a perfect, like, backstory of, like, doing all those things that normally happen to build up your reputation so that you are the least detected person to walk away with billions of dollars. You think he walks away, Dave? I think that he doesn't. I, I don't know. I don't know what exactly his personal financial situation is. I know that uh, I know. FTX gave him loans of... of uh, millions or billions. I can't remember what the headline said. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what he's personally going to end up with this. I just think that the whole thing blew up and customers are, are not going to see their money again. And, and then after that, uh, the BlockFi and Genesis freeze yesterday, BlockFi uses or BlockFi and what's the other one? Um, Oh, I, I've talked about them on my channel because of their credit card. What is it? Not BlockFi. Crypto, oh, Gen uh, Genesis and, uh, and Gemini. Yes. BlockFi is the one I had their credit card. Genesis is the big lending company that uh, Gemini uses for their earn program. And yesterday they froze the accounts or they froze, froze the ability to withdraw from their earn program because of the yeah, people they were lending to were, were not only affected by three arrows capital a while back, but now had more exposure than they initially said to. Uh... All, all I know, Dave, is this story has everything. This is going to be the greatest like film ever. Like yeah. it has everything. It has the, the drama of 
the you know the shady stuff that they were doing as a group down there the amphetamines the the the, the hug the um what not not hugging parties what do they call them like um, <laughs> what are they calling them down there they're doing talking about hugging parties? parties yeah they were doing like no it's parties. polygamy they, they had like a polygamy yeah. ranch or something I, I, Allegedly. I whatever they want to call it. If Dude. anybody <laughs> wants to invite me to a snuggle party, don't. That sounds, that's like my worst nightmare. <laughs> so so you're telling me like our dumb money 2023 get together shouldn't be a, a snuggling? Not going to be a cuddle, cuddle party? party? If you want to do that, that's party. Fine. That's what it's called. Um, I cuddle will party. leave <laughs> when that starts to happen. <laughs> I, I think I think snuggling is worse than cuddling. <laughs> oh, no. They both sound pretty bad to me. Just don't touch me. That's that's my. <laughs> you can talk, you can have some drinks for as long as you want to. Just you know, we don't need to. We don't need to cuddle. There are apparently, according to the chat, friends, there are ten different friends. documentaries coming out about FTX in uh, 2023. Wouldn't be surprised. I just love that our next episode, which let's just let's just say we do something like Monday, right? So our our next our next episode uh, kind of came to light uh, during the ticker tags reunion dinner uh, last week, which was so awesome that it came to light when we were all talking about it. It was so good to see the old ticker tags uh, crew. By the way, I want to give a shout out, Jordan, to our new friend uh, who's one of the dumb uh, dumb money community member who created an ridiculously awesome platform that he's launching called ticker trends dot is it dot io jordan i don't remember what the url is but yeah it's called ticker trends ticker trends it's a very similar to what ticker tags was that we built back in the day um and what's really phenomenal about this guys is so as you all know i pay like you know twelve thousand dollars a year to buy uh data that allows me to see web trends going back a few years because you have to have that benchmark to see year over year data. And I try to share that with the community whenever it's relevant. But Ticker Trends actually cut a license with SimilarWeb to where they are showing two year SimilarWeb web traffic data, which is insane. Uh, I think they're charging like $2.99 a month. So if you guys, if anyone has $2.99 a month and you want to buy it, um, one ninety nine I mean, for unlocked access. One ninety nine a month. Yep, dude, that is that's great data. That is that's expensive data. That's twelve thousand dollars a year for me personally to buy that data. So, so this this is not a sponsored. Uh, this is not a sponsorship. No, no it's not a. <laughs> we we're not investors in ticker trends. We don't own any of it. We're not getting paid by them. But but no, it's it's one of our community members uh, who actually started watching our show a few years ago and decided to build this platform. He's a That's kid cool. that goes to SMU. He's so very nice. a student at SMU. Nice guy, by the way. Yeah, we, we, we took him out uh, last week and it was a lot of fun. So um, cool. anyway, uh, what else? I mean, my head is already on Monday's episode. I'm sorry, I, I can't wait. I can't wait to talk about it. Are we gonna because like I it, are you going to tell tell people what the topic even is? I think I know which one it is. Is it the one that you texted about a, a while ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't. Have you made any about, trades no, on this one yet? Well, well, let's put it out there and have the community come up with their own trades, and let's talk about it on Discord, and we will reveal our trades on our next episode. So let's just reveal it right now. So, um, the the incidence of flu in America is at a 13 year high and beyond the incidence of flu being at a 13 year high the i think hospitalization rates death rates um but that really doesn't matter we're not really talking about that what we're talking about is the number of people who are just generally sick right now seems to be at a multi-decade high for the month of november so what happened was uh the flu season has started earlier uh, and we don't know how that's going to actually play out, but I think that's going to have an impact on a number of companies this quarter. And there are a lot of things happening that as investors, we can research related to products, related to companies, related to services that would benefit or be harmed by having an, an unusually high number of people sick right now 
uh, going into the Thanksgiving holiday season. So again, potentially lots of trades. We will come to our next show with our favorite trades on this trend. Is it a trend? It's not a trend. On it. What would you call it? It's not a trend it's a phenomenon. I mean, so like my whole house has had it for, I mean, except for me, but my whole house has been uh, down for the count for like a week Jordan, last week. The schools are literally like emptied out. Like it's absolutely insanity how few kids are at school. I've mm -hmm. never seen in my yep. life so many people at home sick. And if so, I have a picture. Dave, do you have that pic from that I sent y'all of the, uh, the 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 pharmacy out in L.A. that my buddies sent me, where the the the, the shelves were just completely wiped out of all cold and flu medicine. You text me it, way too many just, things. Did you send that to the me and Jordan I, group you and text? Jordan, what about you and you and Jordan? You and Jordan. Um, but like, I'll try to I'll look for it too here there it's 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 really interesting and i think jordan kind of has an interesting trade we'll talk about on monday um i have some trade ideas i haven't done anything yet i haven't i haven't bought anything and by the way i'll just i'll just reaffirm here i hate trading in this market i just hate it yeah. i barely want to do anything no matter how strong my thesis is because does it even matter i mean does anything even matter other than the macro market right now so again, sorry, but it's a crappy time to be an observational social arb investor. But we're still going to do our shows. We're going to talk about our thesis and our, you know, trades that could be interesting. Kleenex. Uh, is Kleenex Maybe. even public? Is that yeah. like a standalone? I don't, no. even, I don't know who Kleenex makes Kleenex. Is. Um, no, that's like Kimberly Kleenex Clark like or something, a, right? Yeah. Is it like Parker yeah, and Gamble don't. or something like that? Yeah, not a needle mover. Oh, Kimberly Clark. That's weird. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy Kimberly Clark on that. All right. So we can't talk too much more about this because we'll have a show on Monday. But we will talk about our trades Monday. But guys, if you have any ideas, uh, dumbmoney dumbmoney TV forward slash Discord. Uh, let's talk about them in the Discord. Um, share ideas, vet them. Uh, let's do what we do best. Back to FTX. What? Why is this guy not arrested yet? Like. I'm well, he was not in the United States. I, I find it interesting that so, you know, there were rumors that he was being held by the Bohemian authorities. Uh, but then yesterday I saw pictures of him like walking around a supermarket and who knows, yeah. right? It's the Internet. So th those pictures could be like a month old or whatever. But um, last I heard, he was those being, authorities being shipped back to the U.S. For some last I heard, he was coming back to the U.S. to be uh, questioned by authorities. But. No, I, yeah, so maybe I, I did hear that the um, New York uh, Manhattan district office is putting together charges, so um, fraud charges. So we'll see how that goes. But what about this new um, class action lawsuit against celebrities who endorsed it? Yeah. That, yeah, I think, is the big story. So, uh, you know, I've heard a few um, like state reps that took money from FTX. <laughs> that well, no, they were one of the biggest donors to the Democratic Party. Right. So that, but you've got it. So you've got a, uh, I mean, and some of those donors, so some of those state reps are giving the money back. Now you don't hear any of the big guys doing that, but um, yeah, I mean, so there's a, there's a lawsuit. It, it, it has uh, Larry David. It's got, um, you know, the Brady's, the um, it's got a few other people. Um, it's probably got, you know, Kevin O'Leary. Um, it does. And yeah, I mean, if you took, if you took promotional dollars from these guys, what, what do you think? Should, do you have to give but, that money back? That's the question. Is it your job as a spokesperson, as a, you know, you're just a marketing face. Is yeah. it your job to research and understand crypto or is it just, is it just okay, you okay. being so paid me, to? Or, me... or does this fall under like a clawback? But then the fraud has to hit for the clawback to come in. Yes. I know that Tom Brady had was paid partially, at least partially in shares of FTX. And so that's wiped out. That but you know, he was also paid in cash. He had to be. And so, like, so it, and it also kind of depends on the, the nature of what you say. Like the Larry David Super Bowl commercial is him being like, yeah, I don't know about this whole crypto thing. Dave, he didn't he write those lines. It's an ad agency who wrote those like, lines. No, I was and, literally just saying that I didn't. Uh, I didn't okay. Know. Okay. So I, I have a great way to understand this. Okay. So here's the deal. Let's pretend that there is a full on criminal. I mean, full on criminal. Uh, that just needs to pull over like a crime on some people and not a company, just a criminal. 
and that criminal comes to you and says, Dave, I'm going to pay you $5,000 to, I don't know, go, go on your show and promote this product that is just a, it's, it's not even real. It's, it's fake or whatever, whatever it is. It just, there's nothing there. You don't know this guy's a criminal, but you go on there and you're like, Hey, this guy, Billy Bob, uh, has these awesome things. You should pay him for this stuff. They're really cool. And then a bunch of people pay this guy for these things and they never get them. He just never sent him anything. He was, the whole thing was a fraud scheme, right? It, 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 it doesn't really matter whether you did research or not. That money was crime money, right? And you're going to have to give that money back. So it doesn't matter that you didn't do anything wrong. Like you didn't realize it. it. It's not that it's your fault even. It's just that that money has to come back. Now, the problem is when you put it under a big company, it's the same exact thing. There's no difference, right? There's no difference. It's still the same thing. It works the same way. And that's why Bernie Madoff, they've been able to claw back 75 cents of every single dollar because every penny that move from Madoff to anyone, to anyone, to anyone else, that money is dirty money that will get clawed back. And yes, I have to tell you, the based on the president of what happened with Madoff, this is a thing now. And I think every dollar is going to get clawed back from every person that received money for anything that 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 can if 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 this goes down as the fraud that we think it is and that doesn't necessarily mean that those people that did that stuff were bad people or made a mistake right it's that's just why I think but you're saying the, like, the money if you're somebody like Larry David or if you're somebody like Kevin O'Leary don't you just jump out in front of this and say hey look I don't know what's going on I'm actually yeah. going to give back all my endorsement dollars. I lost yep. money in this. I'm going to lose money in this company. Hell, but you know what? Well, Kevin O'Leary was an investor invested, in the company. Anybody that they paid me, I'm going to go. Let's create a fund that's going to go to making whole as many of the investors as possible. And I'm going to put those promotional dollars back in. Right. And Kevin then, O'Leary has lost money. He was an investor in the company. Uh, I, right. I He was probably also receiving promotional also money in exchange for, for or, or additional shares of FTX. Right. He was, um, yeah. I just don't know that, like, if you're talking about the Bernie Madoff money, that was, was that promoters? Like, Bernie wasn't running advertisements for his scam. He was basically just scamming people. This Dave, is this Dave, is different. Dave, Dave, if you, I believe the way it works is any money that goes out, it doesn't matter, like, it's going to get caught. If it came from, if it was dirty money, I think it comes back. I think Well, the interesting back. thing here is the money... The money that went to the advertising partners is one pool of money, but all of the money that was left in the account, they got hacked right around the time when it would have been convenient, and all, anything left that was sitting in the account got drained out. Yeah, I mean, who knows I, what happened why there. Why is no one talking about that still? Well, people like, are talking like, about that. I, it's a very... It's $600 million, $700 million on that Friday night they got hacked. Like everyone was talking about it for a day and then no one talked about that again. I like I'm curious who was that? Like because there were rumors they're, that it was they're following the money. Basically, at this point, the last I saw that all of that hacked coins have been converted into Ethereum, and now it's one of the top holding Ethereum account. There's a wallet. Everyone's watching the wallet. They know where the money is, they just don't know whose money it is. And so likely that money will go into one of those uh blender sites and then come out you know, washed on the other end and someone's going to, someone's going to get away with it. Do you think it's him? I personally think that there has, they had a back door. They've, they, we know that there was a back door that allowed them to move money out of the platform and into their Alameda research uh, division without notifying anyone in the company. Um, I think that it's likely that there was um, that back door was not fully protected. Well, and somebody who had access, I, it had to be inside because how would it be so, why wouldn't they, they have um, drained the accounts before any of this went down? The, yeah. If it, was, if it was just, oh, this is a security flaw, if someone finds it, they would have drained it before, yeah, the, timing before is very the company fishy. blew up. The timing is very fishy, so. Oh, um, I, I'll tell you this, the, uh, reading some of his, I guess, DMs, or messages that he sent, I guess, to Vox and stuff like that the last couple of days. That to me is stunning. He's literally making fun of the entire system. The complex. He's basically has come out from what I from what I'm interpreting, and is stating that he didn't. 
care about compliance. He thinks compliance is a joke. It's all basically a front. They pretend to be compliant. They can pretend to talk to regulators. And the entire thing was like a joke to him. Um, the fact that they had so few employees working on stuff, like I don't know if it was an intentional from the very beginning, like an intentional, we're going to just defraud or if they're that. I, I, I almost think it's more incompetence than intentional incompetence. fraud. I think they built this thing. They didn't have a CFO. They weren't really watching what was going on and they got uh, over leveraged. And then a bank run happened because one of their enemies, CZ, uh, tweeted and they, they were that like just a house of cards ready to collapse. So, so on one hand, okay, he went to MIT. I think, I, think right? I don't know that it was intentional from the beginning, but there's so much evidence that what he was doing was just building a reputation. Of, he had a squeaky clean re reputation. That, and that's why I think celebrities were willing to do an endorsement. I don't think that anybody suspected that he was going to turn fraudster. And I don't even know that he knew that he was going to be fraudster. But once it starts I, to fall apart... I mean, but it I sounds think, like if, if what we hear is true, then you know, somebody was committing some sort of crime the whole time, right? If all of that stuff is true. So, all right. So first of all, he had, he had, you know, a very shady compliance officer, I guess, formerly was over the, the fraud ring with online offshore or online casinos where they were basically, you know, uh, defrauding players in those online casinos. That's just amazing to me. By the way, the Sequoia comes out and says that they did due diligence and they didn't see who the compliance officer of the company was or that they didn't have controls in place. I mean, that that's just ridiculous on Sequoia's part. Um, uh, also- But I you have to remember that the due diligence that these VCs that were trying to, like the entire crypto market was just going up. There was a mad race to be an investor in the companies that were- supposedly just killing oh, it. We know, know. we know how that we've been investors in private companies. And a lot yeah. of times our due diligence is, well, we don't want to be the lead investor. We're going to wait for someone else to be a lead investor. And we just assume that they do the due diligence because they're way bigger than us. They have way more money at stake whoa, than us. Whoa, and we put whoa, a few whoa, dollars whoa, in at the whoa, end. Whoa, maybe you. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. No, I will totally admit that I do, have not done due diligence on some of the private investments that I have made into we're, private we're companies. We're also not investing other people's money, and we're That's not true. investing hundreds of millions of dollars of other people's money. So, so as the as one of the leads, so like I just think, no, that and that's why I would rely on them to do the due diligence for me personally. I would rely on them, but I feel like there was such a FOMO going on, a, a gold rush, a mad rush for people. Any anyway, everybody wanted to be involved and invested in FTX. I bet Chris Camillo, if you were given the opportunity to invest in FTX when the I market was. was on fire, you would have been like, I yeah, was. yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I, I would love to buy I, some shares. I I, I was, I, I, the FTX opportunity crossed my path and I had really no, I mean, I was, I had no interest in it because I, I didn't know much about FTX. I, but I did know that everybody that I knew that was kind of an institutional guy was so pumped on them. I was like, why are you guys, the valuations I thought were insane. Like for me, yeah. I, I saw the valuations in the tens of billions of dollars. I was like, I don't understand why, because at the time we invested in Coinbase privately, right? Remember that? That was our big trade was- Yes, uh, at, and Robinhood. Those, those turned out yeah. great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we, but but we, they turned, both turned out great for me. I mean, I, I got out of, I got out of Coinbase, I think the day we got our share, literally the day it went, public or the two days after or something like that. So that worked out great. And Robinhood worked out great because I got out of half my shares ready the day it went, the day we were able to sell. Um, but guys, like, I, I don't know. I think the due diligence process was absolutely insane for an institutional fund of that size. I think that's just totally inappropriate. It is what it is. I think the most interesting thing to come out of this, though, in terms of understanding the intelligence level uh, of Sam is that I guess this video game that he played has various kind of skill levels and he's been playing it for a couple of years. And evidently he only got up to like a bronze, which people are like, that's a red flag to be playing that game for two <laughs> years and be it. No, I, I know it sounds stupid, but like he but obviously went to MIT. He's not ridiculous. You know, he, he's relatively smart, right. In certain ways, but that is kind of a red flag that he was playing that game for that long and was unable to get above 
what is a level that most people say a kid could easily get above relatively quickly. I just know that he was also yeah. playing a video game during his investor presentation calls, and people were still blown away by what he had to say. They they all wanted to throw money at him. Yeah. So what? I, whether I he's good at playing a video game or not, he was really good at playing VC investors. Yeah. Yeah. They all all the con men are. I mean, it, it's it's. But the crazy thing is, like, you look at him and you just think, yeah, he seems like a guy that's on amphetamines, right? Like, <laughs> he just seems like and taking sleeping pills at night. Like he's seen that disorderly. His hair, his 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 shirt on, has like stains on it, right? It, it, and, there was some patch that he's taking that is like a like an interdermal patch that if you it it makes you like like smarter, better focused. It's, it's like one of those uh, magic pills from that movie. I can't remember the movie. Yeah. It didn't work. It didn't work. Well, it so. sure got him ramped up to billionaire status in a hurry <laughs> and it all came crumbling well, down even faster. Yeah. He, well, I'll tell you one thing, you know, guys that look like him, talk like him, act like him are going to have a very hard time raising money. I would imagine the next, five to 10 years until people forget again. Oh, any, anyone trying to raise money for a, any kind of a crypto <laughs> platform. <laughs> like I feel bad for the legitimate people out there in the space who are trying to build something legitimate because they're not going to be able to get any investment dollars. I would think I wouldn't invest. I would have, I would have, I wouldn't have, I, I'm trying to think, would I have invested in FTX? I didn't have the opportunity to invest in it as a platform. I was given promotional opportunities to promote them, um, but I didn't do any of that. I didn't do, uh, I, I was never uh, a paid spokesperson for any crypto platforms, even crypto.com, which I talked about their credit card a lot. I was, ne those were never sponsored videos. Those are just my opinions. Oh, really? I, yeah. I was I was worried about you. I was like, I, no, every no. time I see something about crypto.com, I'm like, oh boy, now Dave's going to go down. I mean, I was using about. affiliate links, but I was I, yeah. like, I have a very distinct difference. I would always disclose these are affiliate links. I usually only would use an affiliate link if it gives the customer something better. Like you can only get your $200 of free stock if you use this link. Um, but no, I've never accepted any sponsorship dollars from any crypto companies ever. It, and you, you've also been pretty pragmatic with your viewpoints on when it was, when you thought it was good, when it was not good, what the risk yeah. factors were, and what you were doing, you know, to, you know, to earn money from it. When I, when I talked about every, I got every crypto card ever issued. Um, I FTX was included, and it was a card that there's no reason to even bother getting this card because it doesn't give you any benefits. I think that was my exact review. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, all right. So this is our last show. No, we'll have one more show before Thanksgiving. Yes. And, probably Tuesday. And hopefully none of us are sick by then. Because oh, it's can the you imagine if we had to do the show sick. with the flu? <laughs> a show well, about right? the flu, like from bed? That'd be fun, yeah, actually. Might, might as well. Um, honestly, guys, <laughs> I, I, I do want to say, like, if you're watching the show right now, um, go do some research on how, how sick people are and who is benefiting and who's being harmed by that in terms of products, brands, publicly traded companies. Um, please share your thoughts with us in the dumbmoney.tv forward slash discord community. <laughs> and th there could be some opportunities out there. Now, be careful because... The, like I said, it's the market, right? Like the market, <laughs> the markets it, is all that matters right now. Like, I don't even know if I'm going to place a trade on this show because I'm afraid to go all in on something when the stock, I still think we can't predict what's going to happen day to day, week to week with this market. And, and I say in the comments, uh, Trader Joseph at uh, says that we should check the uh, G trends on RSV. That's, that's the other thing that is putting people um, in the hospital children oh so oh, that's yeah, something RSV. that well, in addition to the flu we need to look at flu plus oh my RSV. gosh can we just show that one chart right now dave you have to do it just uh RSV. give me a minute five year five year rsd us or global doesn't matter five trends dot google that is rsv a wild taylor swift of course is right up there top 
oh, just, just at the past 12 months. But RSV wasn't even no, a thing. Nobody year. talked about it. So that, I mean, yes, of course the G trend is going to be like that because I guess it's a seasonal thing. August, uh, December, December. I don't know why there's a little August spike here in 2020. I know that's, yeah, December. This one's in August of 21. But uh, I'd never heard of RSV until this, like, past couple, Good point. couple weeks. Good point. Uh, I, I think, well, definitely RSV is something people have talked about for a couple of years. But I, I agree with you. That term is being more widely used generally, regardless of the number of people that have it now. Um, but we don't need to look at search trends for RSV. That, that's something that we can see stats on. Anyway, we'll pull all those stats. We'll have all the data for this sick episode. Uh, come with the creative name, Dave. But we will have that for you early next week, guys. Um, yeah, other than that, have a good weekend. So subscribe on your way out if you haven't already. Thumbs up on your way out if you haven't already. Uh, turn on notifications because that's the only way to know if we're going to be on. Uh, we have a podcast which is basically a replay of this show. You can get it on Spotify and Apple. We have uh, a Twitter account at Dumb Money TV. We have uh, our own Twitter accounts, Dave Hansen, Chris Camello, and Jordan underscore McLean. I don't know how you got that uh, such a good domain there or uh, handle underscore. I did underscore is literally Jordan's middle name. So it's really cool. Jordan underscore McLean. You know, that's right. <laughs> We're Dumb Money. See you next week.